Hi, it's Nate here today to give a brief demonstration on CMM Manager offline vision capabilities. Uh, you may be familiar already with our vision capabilities on the Nikon iNexiv and VMZR hardware. Uh, today, we're actually looking at doing some inspection again offline using images that we've imported into CMM Manager. So uh, I'll be presenting entirely from CMM Manager today uh, through use of prompts and text and image prompts both and then of course through live, live demonstration of the software. So if we step through this program that I've created uh, just telling us a little bit about each of these steps of our program. First, of course, being importing an image. So from the CMM Manager user interface, of course, we have some sort of CAD view that we should all be familiar with. We do also have on the left an image view, which is blank at the moment. But here I can import and or select an image that we'd like to use. So you can see each of these steps is adding a step into the program. So if we replay this program, uh, we should be able to uh, recreate each of these steps that we're performing manually in the case that we're wanting to do repeat measurements. So I've imported an image. Next, we need to set a pixel size. So with an online system, we calibrate at least one magnification through the optics, sometimes several. That's all managed here in our tip manager. So if you're familiar with CMM manager on a tactile system, you could have many different tip orientations that you're calibrating. In the same regards, you could have several video tips or sensors that you calibrate and use inside of CMM Manager. So when you're using offline images, you do need to know the pixel resolution from that offline image. Uh, if you don't have that information inside of your image that you've gathered, you could include some artifact of a known size and perform the calibration immediately in CMM Manager and of course make the adjustment to the, the pixel resolution. So next step, actually next three steps, we'll perform some measurements, we'll create an alignment, and we'll do some sort of reporting outputs. So all of our measurement, alignment, and reporting tools are available here in this simplified user interface I've provided. Uh, in contrast to the normal ribbon bar layout that you may be accustomed to with CMM Manager, uh, today we're using just a simplified toolbar interface instead. So I'll start by measuring a line. And with this line measurement, we need to select some sort of image tool that we're going to use, whether that be a circle, a line, an arc, and so on. We can either manually set up our buffer tool. You can see here if I fire this along this very long complex curve that we have get points all the way along that edge. Uh, alternately, we could use what we call tool magic and you can pick immediately from your vision or your live video feed and you can set up a buffer tool or the appropriate tools automatically. So in this case, I'll measure one line on the bottom of the part and then a second line on the left side of the part and actually a third line on the top side of the part. And we'll do a construction. So the intersection of these two lines will create a point intersection. And at this point, we can create an alignment. So we'll set an origin first to the point on the top left corner of the part. And we'll also align 
to the line on the top of the part in the X positive direction. So now you see your coordinate system here in regards to the rough shape of the part that we've defined thus far. So measuring some additional features, maybe this time a circle. Again, with this tool magic and I'm wanting to repeat this operation. The moment I end the collection, I can move the tool to a new location. You notice if I test fire the tool, it resizes it automatically. So I'm test firing this tool by right clicking and then actually collecting points here from the collect point button or by pressing the space bar on the computer keyboard. Again, another feature, this time a slot. So we can either, again, manually size and position our tools as needed, or with the tool magic, we can pick on a feature within the video view and immediately collect some points and move on to the next feature and basically repeat as needed. So one more slot. So here we've measured several features. Um, let's have a look at reporting and then we'll come back to maybe bringing a CAD model in and making some comparisons to CAD. So first and foremost, the, foremost, the simple reporting tool, feature report, we can pick a feature we can, without the benefit of a CAD model, define the tolerances or the nominal values nominally, manually, sorry. And we can continue picking each of these, again, specifying tolerances and nominal values for each. So a couple of these slots, maybe we have an opportunity to look at an angle between the slot and the coordinate system. So you'll notice that if I'm trying to select a slot for an angle operation, it's telling me that it's not a suitable operation. So normally a slot will be treated as a point feature. We can construct a line from a slot. So we can pick the slot and then you'll notice that we have a couple solutions here. So either a line going through one direction or the other along the length or the width of that slot. So if I construct this line, click OK. Now we have an opportunity to report an angle between this line bisecting the slot and then a line along the length of our part. Uh, and then we can choose the portion of that angle that we're interested in. So maybe you know, this portion here, and of course, a nominal value, 120. So for each of these report outputs that we've created, we're creating a paper report document that can be printed or saved uh, in several file formats. We could also add to this report document a graphical report. So with a graphical report, we get a report output that can be added to our report document where we can now take any of these report characteristics and drag them immediately to our report document. So now, instead of only having text representation of our dimensional output, we can also have some graphical representation. So it makes it perfectly clear to somebody looking at this report the difference between, for example, circle one, circle two, and you know, all of these different report items. So one more step. We'll take a look at what we've measured here so far, and we see a graphical representation of all of these features. We could have also from the beginning, or in this case, optionally at the end of our inspection routine, import a CAD model. 
So now we have a nominal model of all of these uh, geometries that we've measured. Uh, we can do comparisons immediately to the CAD model, or we can do reporting with no nominal values. Uh, so in this particular case, I'm going to measure what we call a cloud. So this is just a group of points. And I will use a buffer tool that I can resize such that I capture points along these series of lines and arcs. <clears throat> so now with that series of measured points that we've just collected, <clears throat> we can make a comparison to the CAD model and evaluate a profile. So in this case, I will use a comparison between a CAD curve and these points that we've measured. So on the XY work plane, or we can also pick some CAD entities that we want to compare to. So in this case, we're comparing to the outside profile of the part. Uh, we can simply select all of those, or we could individually pick the, the CAD entities that we're interested in. So in this case, maybe I can pick so the entire outside profile, and then also picking from the graphics the point cloud that we're making the comparison to. <clears throat> we can optionally turn on any type of report output. So for each point, and I think there was 50, we could include an X, Y, Z, and or 3D deviation. We could include a profile uh, output only. So maybe let's compare the difference of these two. So with 3D, we'll create a report output and quickly have a look in our report. We see that the total profile is nearly a millimeter. We have 50 data points with a max deviation, min deviation, average deviation, followed by the deviation of each individual measured point. In contrast to that, in our program, if we make a copy of that report item and turn off the 3D and turn on the profile, <coughs> we come back to our report. Scroll down to the very bottom. Now we have a simplified uh, representation where we simply have an upper and lower tolerance for the total profile followed by the deviation. And again, in this case, it is in fact out by some amount. So last step, maybe we wanna have a look at this graphically. So we'll add one more graphical report with CAD features. So initially showing a graphical report just a phenomenal shape. And then if we drag any of these report items into these graphical reports, we see immediately uh, in the case of a profile, something like this where we see uh, whiskers indicating the deviation along these edges. Uh, also in the case of uh, the graphical report that we created earlier with the uh, strictly basic reportings, uh, we can create maybe one more in a similar fashion. Again, with the very basic reporting outputs, so size, location, angle, for example. So immediately we have some annotations on the features. And then for our angle, uh, we'll actually have an annotation showing each of the features that we're reporting the angle to and from. And my preference, typically if I'm using graphical reports, is to move those up to the top of the report document. So now when somebody's having a look at their report in CMM Manager, immediately they see some graphics that tell probably a more complete and more understandable story than strictly looking at lines of text reporting. So 
So we'll save the project that I'm working on. And let's actually have a look now at the program that I've previously created where we can actually show with these offline images uh, another tool, pattern recognition, where we can actually cope with images where the workpiece is located, uh, not only located, but also rotated within the, the image in unique locations from one inspection to the next. So when I play this program, uh, asking for serial number, and then it's asking me, OK, do I want to import a rotated image? So the first time we run this program, we'll say no. We want to use the standard image. And in this particular case, I'm collecting each point manually so that you, the users and, and you viewers can see a little better what's going on in this program. Um, there is a preference in the software where you can tell the software, instead of me manually clicking each time to step through the program, to just automatically execute each of these steps in, in rapid succession. So at the end of collecting all of our measurement data, we see in the software uh, a report document generated uh, with both graphics and text, as we saw in the previous example. And if you bear with me for just a moment, we can turn this preference on that I mentioned previously. So with our vision preferences, we have an option here to automatically collect when offline. So what that means now when I run this program a second time, different serial number. And yes, this time I want to use the rotated image. So now the program is done running. The report document is created. And you'll notice if I hide the report document just for a moment, this image is rotated slightly within the, the image field of view. And that's reflected both in the nominal CAD model and, of course, the measured features and, of course, the coordinate system or reference frame that we've created within that inspection routine. And we should also see, if I open up my Windows Explorer here and have a look for that report document, if you remember, I typed in a serial number for each of those. so offline vision sample underscore 168 PDF. And there's our PDF document with all of our inspection results saved to that PDF document. We should see in the header of this document that unique serial number. Uh, and then also another instance of this same report document with different serial number. So you'll see at the beginning of each of these program executions when we're entering this unique information that's helping you with traceability of your report documents so that you can go back in history sometime down the road to find very easily your report documentation in whatever file format you're choosing. So that's it for today. Thank you. Uh, look forward to creating some more of these quick uh, demonstrations with some of our other products that CMM Manager is working on. Thank you.